Welcome to Ask and Analyst. I invited Sarah and Fabian for today. Welcome. Hello. Hello. So maybe we should start with introducing ourselves. Um, so Fabian, would you like to start? Okay. So my name is Fabian Woser and I am working for the antivirus company MCSoft. Um, I am pretty much active as, well, <clears throat> sorry, I am their current CTO and I'm mostly responsible for all the malware research and um, the core technology side of business pretty much. Um, hey, I'm Sarah, also known as Toffee or Polar Toffee. Um, I also work at MSoft and I do the kind of ramp to my side of things. Yeah, my name is Carson and I work at GData. Um, I'm mostly responsible for writing signature detection. So um, the ransomware thing is uh, yeah, also something I specialize in, but um, my main responsibility is writing detection signatures. So, all right, um, let's start with the questions that you sent us. And we decided that we, we got a lot of questions. So we decided that we divide them into categories and make three parts out of it. And uh, today we will start with the personal questions. So we get to know each other and yeah, let's see. Um, Aura and Catalin ask, uh, where does your love for polar bears come from? And how did this polar bear obsession start? So maybe you can say something about that, Sarah. Um, well, it originally started when I got um, a polar bear onesie for Christmas and I happened to share a picture of me in it. And then it kind of went from there. People started to call me polar bear and I kind of adopted it as like my avatar or my personality. Yeah, she really is a polar bear now. I mean, for all intents and purposes. Um, yeah, pretty much what she said. She shared like a picture. I, well, we have like an IRC channel where we hang out with a, a whole bunch of people of um, Bleeping Computer and a couple of other places. And um, yeah, she just happened to, to share a picture of her there and everybody thought it was cute and adorable. So everybody started calling her a little polar bear. Is it correct that your avatars were made by an artist who um, created those as a gift? Um, yes, that's correct. Um, essentially, um, a whole bunch of ransomware victims that we helped over, over the time offered to either donate money or just do stuff for us in return because they were thankful. And especially when it comes to money, we usually re reject those those uh, offers, mostly because we prefer people put their money into a proper backup solution than, than just donating uh, money to us. Um, but in some cases, especially artists offered to do like avatars or pictures of us. Uh, well, not of us, but for us. Um, and the avatars um, that Sarah and I both use are the result of one artist in particular who offered to do like little cartoons of us um, uh, in, in, in return for us helping him. So yeah, that's where those neat little avatars come from. Those are great gifts from, from people. Um, yeah, what are your hobbies outside of work? Maybe Fabian, you can. Um, for me, my work pretty much is my hobby. So uh, that's probably also why I kind of overindulge in it and um, overwork a little bit. I'm, I'm kind of a workaholic because I'm, I have like a kind of addictive personality and I really enjoy, well, if, if I really enjoy doing something that I will do it over and over again in excessive, in, in, in excessive amounts. Um, so yeah, other than, than work, it's like, mostly mostly games tabletop games stuff like that i'm not really like a person that likes to go outside and um yeah um as for me i volunteer on bleeping computer where i teach um students kind of 
malware removal. Um, I occasionally help out on the uh, malware and vlogs forum and generally more often on the ransomware forum. Um, other than that, I also enjoy um, reading, baking, which I do quite often, and also like um, Fabian, I also enjoy tabletop games. Well, um, I like painting. I paint acrylics and um, the avatars show some of my paintings. So um, those are actually self-portraits of me with the hedgehogs. Yeah. Um, other than that, I also like playing computer games and I love playing pen and paper role-playing games. Um, but yeah, you see, I also mostly stay at home with my hobbies. <laughs> I guess it's kind of a computer science thing. I mean, it, it's not a requirement, but I think it's kind of helpful. <laughs> Especially if you get run over, if you, if you go. Yeah, to... yeah. Like the last time I went outside and, well, not the last time I went outside, but the last time I crossed a zebra crossing, a car hit me, so outside and I don't don't shy very well. And that's why he doesn't like to go outside anymore. Or to begin with, I guess. Yeah, to begin with. Because I know there are ransomware authors out there who want to run me over with their cars. So uh, when did you get interested in malware? At which age and why? Sarah? Um, for me, I think it was about when I was 13 or 14. Um, I happened to stumble across Bleeping Computer. And as I mentioned before, they kind of have like a log forum where they like remove malware and um, adware from people's computers. Um, so you have to like train to do that. So um, I decided that I was going to take part in the training because I had some free time and I thought it'd be interesting. And that's kind of where it went, like grew from. Um, for me, I was, uh, I think about 10 or 11 years old and back then in the old days, uh, there wasn't really an internet. So if you wanted to get like the newest game, which of course you, you, you copied from, from your friends and not bought it because games were extremely expensive back then. But anyway, um, you copied them from your friends and you usually did that on floppy disks, which as we all know, are read and write, uh, mediums. So, um, that means you often got uh, computer viruses that way. And I got pretty much infected with tequila back then. And since uh, antiviruses were kind of difficult to come by, um, I somehow had to remove it myself. Um, so I took it apart and like figured out how to clean my files without an, a proper antivirus. And, um, after that, I just went into the local library and they had actually books about computer viruses there. And I kind of got them all and, um, read them and started collecting viruses and stuff like that. So yeah, that's how I started out pretty much. Well, unlike you, I started much, much later to get interested in this field. Um, I was interested in computer science long before that. But when it comes to malware, I started getting interested in when I was 28 or 29 years old. That was three to four years ago. And uh, I read Peter Zor's book, The Art of Computer Virus Research and Defense. And I really loved it, and I loved that how how these viruses can evolve like biological viruses. And uh, yeah, I started to write a parser for portable executable files, and the most interesting portable executable files were malware. So that's how I got interested in it. Yeah. What other questions do we have? Daniel, Daniel asked a question that a lot of people liked, so it's probably of interest, of interest for a lot of people. What color is the number five, Sarah? Um, I've never really thought about that before. It's, it's I'm not a very um, visual person in most situations, but if I had to say, it would probably be a blue color. 
Um, for me, five is definitely like an ugly color, like really, really neon, neon green, like like slime and disgusting. Because I don't like the number five for some reason. But other than that, I don't really think of colors well of of numbers and and colors. So I don't have synesthesia. I think it's called. I don't know. Yeah, synesthesia. Uh, yeah, synesthesia. Um. So yeah, a uh, very very ugly and bright and neon green for me. Do you have any other kind of synesthesia, maybe? Um, I don't really. Um, um I'm pretty sure I don't either. I believe that I am of the type of the associative uh, synesthetic. So there are two types. There's the the projector who can who actually sees the number five in that color if he, let's say, if he sees it on a paper or on the computer screen. It's also in that color. Um, for me, it's not that way. So I just strongly associate colors with numbers and also with letters. And uh, yeah, the number five is a light green for me. It does not help me with log analysis. Um, Daniel told me that um, for him, it helps him with analyzing logs. He can, I guess he also, he really is a projector and sees it that way. So, but uh, for me, it just helps remembering things because I have this other association with it and can imagine that, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you have any interest in any other IT field? Then uh, it does not have to be security related, but yeah. Do you have any interest in in, in it's? Mm, for me, which kind of comes with the territory is like cryptography and also machine learning. Since I'm mostly a developer and not really a malware analyst or reverse engineer, it's also all that stuff that comes with the develop uh, development uh, aspect of computer science, which means like um, life cycles, um, different development techniques and stuff like that. Um, I think that, that there really isn't like one part of IT that I, that I absolutely dislike or that I wouldn't, uh, well, or, or that I would mind getting into. Um, the only parts that I don't really dabble in are all the hardware aspects of it, like hardware design and stuff like that. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in hardware in, in, in the way developer would, like how can I use it? How do the, the, the interfaces and the ports work and stuff like that? Um, but I don't re I, I'm not really into uh, hardware design itself, probably because I'm just horribly clumsy and I would just destroy it. Um, for me, I think it's mostly the cryptography, um, which is quite related to kind of security. Um, but also learning about um, networking will be quite interesting. When I was still at the university, I really loved theoretical computer science. And um, I was kind of a weirdo for that because most of my fellow students hated it. Uh, it's very mathematical and it's, um, you have to do proofs, mathematical proofs. And I guess, well, I don't know. I actually don't know why I like it so much. So I just do. And, uh, I took a job in, uh, I was a student assistant and later a graduate assistant and I corrected the homeworks of the other students. Um, so. That's a subject I definitely had a lot of interest in. Other than that, also artificial intelligence. I think if I had not gone into the malware field, I might have started uh, with with artificial intelligence instead. So, yeah, yeah, it's quite a big field at the moment. They're looking at ways to like implement it into pretty yeah. much everything. They are looking for ways to destroy humanity. Skynet is real, people. Yes. Chemtrails. Yes. Oh, oh, all, all, all those chemtrails. Oh my God. Illuminati. 
here's a hard question for you. Do hackers really wear ski masks? Yeah, of course. Only only in crappy TV shows or when it's really cold. Ah, he's ruining it. I think all of them do because otherwise you would see who it is, right? Yeah, exactly. You would you would know you would know who they were. That's how they avoid um, crim- uh, law enforcement. Prosecution. Of course. I mean, it, it's that and using PayPal to pay for the, for the DDoS stressors, right? Yeah, definitely. You're, yeah. you're like a top hacker if you use PayPal. Amazing. Okay. I have to remember that. Okay. And the last question uh, from Frederico. How is your Twitter handle pronounced? And that was directed at me. Uh, and it isn't the first time that I got this question. It's pronounced Struppige. Um Now you know it. <laughs> All right. Um, that's it for today. Do you have anything else to add? Um, I don't don't really have anything to add. Just looking forward to to the next two segments, really. Yeah, me either. All right then. Um... Thank you for for joining this interview and we see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.